Welcome to the Writing, Reading, Speech Assistance area. This is a mini lesson on run-on sentences. What is a run-on sentence and why should I care? What is a sentence anyway? You may already have ideas about how you would describe a sentence. In other words, starts with a capital letter and ends with a period is one of my favorites, but unfortunately sentences are a bit more complicated than that. So, is a sentence a complete thought, a subject and a verb, an independent clause? All of these definitions are used, but you can almost always find exceptions to them. What makes a sentence a sentence can be a moving target, but we almost always know one when we see one. English is a subject-verb language, and the pattern of most sentences is that of a subject doing something. So ask yourself, who or what, in other words, the subject, is doing what, in other words, the verb. It's important to be able to identify the subject in your sentence, which is the who or the what, and the main verb, which is what the subject of the sentence is doing. There are going to be other nouns and verbs in your sentences, but they will be doing work to support or qualify the main subject, which is going to be the main noun, and the verb, which is the action that the main subject is taking. So what is a run-on sentence? It is not just a long sentence. A sentence can run two pages long and still not be a run-on sentence. So for example, let's take a look at E.B. White's sentence from Stuart Little. It's 107 words long. A run-on sentence is a collection of sentences or clauses which have been run together without proper punctuation. Now we're going to talk about the ways to join sentences in order to avoid run-on sentences. So the common misconception is that any sentence that is longer than a line or two has to be a run-on sentence, but this is not true. As long as the sentences are joined properly, a sentence can go on for many pages. Here are the five main ways to join sentences together. As I said earlier, English is a subject-verb language. We may vary how complicated the subjects and verbs are and add many different kinds of clauses to our sentences, but the basic structure remains the same. This slide has two sentences joined by a period. This is the most common way people put sentences together. The girl went to the concert. Her friends met her there. Each sentence has a subject and a verb, someone doing something. In the first sentence, we have a girl, and she is going someplace. She went to a concert. The second sentence has another subject, her friends, and her friends did something. They met her there. Subject, verb, subject, verb, joined together by a period. The second example of joining sentences is with a semicolon. Here we have two sentences. The girl went to the concert, semicolon. She loved the group performing. Using a semicolon indicates to the reader that there is a close connection between the content of each sentence, closer generally than you would find between two sentences. The third way to join sentences is with a comma and a conjunction. Take this sentence as an example. The girl went to the concert, but she had to borrow money to pay for her ticket. We have a subject and a verb in the first sentence. The girl went. Following the conjunction, we have another sentence. She had to borrow money to pay for her ticket. The conjunction and the comma work together to show the reader the connection between these two sentences. There are two more examples to follow with different conjunctions. If you omit the conjunction and join these sentences only with a comma, this is what is commonly called a comma splice. If you find comma splice written on your papers by your instructors, this is what he or she is referring to. You have joined two sentences with a comma and no conjunction to introduce the next clause. A good way to remember your conjunctions, if you don't know this or didn't learn it in school, is by fanboys. 
Each letter in fanboy stands for or represents one of the conjunctions in English. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. If you remember fanboys, you will know all of the conjunctions to use in constructing sentences. Caution. If there is a conjunction, it does not always mean you have two sentences, and it does not always mean you need a comma. For example, here are two of the previous sentences rewritten. The girl went to the concert, but had to borrow money to pay for her ticket. Notice we have omitted the she, which is the second subject of the second clause. If you do not have someone doing something in that second clause, you do not need to join the two sentences with a comma and a conjunction. Second example, the girl went to the concert and had a great time there with her friends. There's a conjunction, but there is no she or subject following it, so you do not need to include the comma. Had a great time there with her friends cannot stand on its own as a sentence. This is a good way to check yourself to see whether you need to use the comma. The fourth way to Join sentences is with a semicolon and a conjunctive adverb. The girl wrote a review of the concert. We have a subject and a verb. Semicolon. Furthermore, she arranged an interview with the band members. Conjunctive adverb. Don't let this term intimidate you. Grammarians feel the need to identify parts of speech and how they work. For our purposes, it's your job to know what they do, not necessarily remember what they're called. A conjunctive adverb qualifies the relationship between these two sentences. Furthermore means to add to or further what's being said about the first subject. My son and daughter both had to memorize a list of conjunctive adverbs to the tune of Yankee Doodle Dandy, which is sort of a cute idea, but I am not sure it helps unless you remember how to use them in a sentence. I'll say it again. In general, conjunctive adverbs qualify or help describe the relationship between two sentences. Remember, you need to have a subject and a verb in the first part of the sentence, and you need a subject and a verb in the second part of the sentence joined by a semicolon and the conjunctive adverb followed by a comma. The fifth and last way to join sentences together is with a colon. This is the least common way of joining sentences. The girl went to the concert, colon. It was brilliant. I like to think of a colon as an equal sign. It lets you know that what is in the second sentence qualifies, adds to, or further enhances what is in the first sentence. In addition to the ways of joining sentences that we've just gone over using punctuation, there is an exception which involves using non-fanboys conjunctions. These are conjunctions like because and since. These do not require any kind of punctuation when they're used to join two sentences together. These conjunctions subordinate one clause to the other. In other words, they change the importance of one of the sentences in relationship to the other. That relationship may be cause and effect, for example, as in the examples here. Um, she was able to write a great review because she gained inside information from the interview. There are many of these non-fanboy conjunctions. When in doubt, look them up. Most of these non-fanboys conjunctions qualify or make one part of the sentence depend on the other for its meaning. Sometimes run-on sentences really compromise the meaning of what's being said. In this example, the girl went to the concert and she was so excited she met her friends. We don't know whether she's excited to meet her friends or she was excited to go to the concert. She had to borrow money for her ticket. It was brilliant. It was her favorite band, and she was going to write a review for school. We do not know whether borrowing money was brilliant, whether the concert was brilliant, 
or whether she was going to write a review about her favorite band or the whole idea of going to the concert. To fix this, we need to think about what we want to mean. I wrote these sentences, so I will go through how I would change them to be properly punctuated and also to mean what I want them to mean. So here's the revision of my original rough draft of a paragraph. The girl went to the concert and she was excited to go and to meet her friends. She had to borrow the money for her ticket. Her mom lent it to her. She loved the concert. It was brilliant. It was her favorite band. Moreover, she got to write a review for her school newspaper about the concert. You'll notice that by paying attention to punctuation and meaning, I've been able to clarify for myself and for my reader the relationship between these sentences. In the previous example, the punctuation really helped us understand and me understand as a writer what I meant to say. Sometimes a run-on sentence is not compromised by not being properly punctuated. In this example, the girl went to the concert and her review was brilliant is a clear sentence even though it is a run-on sentence. It does not have a comma before the conjunction and. So why does this matter if it doesn't interfere with meaning? Errors can lead to bad impressions. English teachers are not the only people who care about correctness in writing. In his book, Engaging Ideas, John Bean talks about a study done by Maxine Hairston, who's a composition researcher. She talked to business and professional people about the errors that bothered them most. Not surprisingly, run-on sentences were in the top category of very serious errors. What you write and how you write it matters to the impression you make on others. Making mistakes might mean the difference between getting an interview for a job or not getting the interview for a job. Thank you for listening and going through this presentation with me. Punctuation matters. It's important. And if you have questions about it, or just need another pair of eyes on your writing or speech, please feel free to come to the Writing Reading Speech Assistance area and we'll be more than happy to help you work on whatever it is you need to work on. Thanks. <music>